everyone, and welcome to episode 164 of Lost in Translation. One. I'm May. And I'm Jay. And this time we watch the great undersea adventure, Find the Digimon Treasure of Dreams. And Rare Card Vanished, the invincible Rook Chessismon. And the amusement park of dreams, Digimon Land. I believe it's pronounced Digimon Land. Second last set of episodes to cover. And next time we'll be covering the last four episodes of Digimon Cross Wars. And there wasn't not there wasn't much news except for the Vic news, which is all coming up all at once a decade late. So we're not going to be talking about that. And I already talked about it a bit on the With the Wall podcast. Also, I know like nothing about it. Yeah, well, surprise. The allegations that people have had for a decade are coming out and he's losing his jobs and that's fair enough. I know I'm shocked. So we have our end of season survey out as well and that's linked in the description and I've been posting about it on our blog and our social media as well. And on to Noxious Nopsis. The first episode they're watching this week is called The Great Undersea Adventure. Find the Digimon Treasure of Dreams. What do you think will happen in this episode? Wow, this sounds like it sounds like the volcano one again, where like they called together to find a treasure of some kind for mm-hmm. the old man who will not explain why he's doing that, but he's going to do it anyway. Right. Sounds annoying. It does, doesn't it? Because it's bad. Yeah, well, uh, leading to the next question, what will annoy you? It will annoy me if they tease the idea of um, like the old chosen, chosen kids come back again, but don't explain anything. Like uh-huh. they're really going in circles with it. I'm so concerned that it's a short season because they just cancel it and you haven't told me that's what's going to happen. Like, there's no actual ending. Right. That would be amazing and also terrible. Do you think it'll be a good episode? No. And what rating? Uh, It should be pretty straightforward, but I couldn't see it getting more than a three at any stage. Probably a two. Like, these numbers are based on entertainment value, right? Yeah. So just, just because, even if they're, like, functional, they're incredibly boring. Right. Which is why one of the highest rated episodes for me was the Okonomiyaki one, because it was so, like, completely clown shoes. Yeah, but th- I didn't like that one, because it was just because of how silly and bizarre it was. Like, it was... But it was entertaining. Also, I just don't like those storylines with the Digimon having a fight with their partner and then running away. Like, it's oh, every I agree season, with you. And it annoys me every time we get the same storyline because it's the same. No, I totally agree. Yeah. And uh, so, filler or not filler? Um, well, it's not. That seems... It, okay, it will be mostly filler is the, is the trick, right? Yeah. It's like almost filler and then you get to the end of it and you're like, ah, oh, well, I can see how it, it might not have been. And like, yeah, it's fine. You know, right. there, there was like something progressed almost. Right. It doesn't count though. It's not good enough. The second episode they're watching this time is called Rare Card Vanished, the Invincible Rook Chessmon. What do you think will happen in this episode? Right, Rare Card. Yep. What cards? They have cards? Like, uh, you know, like cards as in like Magic as the in Gathering. Tamers? Card or slash? Know. Yeah sure, card slash, why not? That would be and wait, hold on wasn't no Rook Chessmon was from or the, the pawn chessmon was from Savers. Yeah, evolved into Rook Chessmon. It would be amazing if this is just like the beginning of the massive hyper crossover, which killed Digimon apparently. So you think you think there's gonna be a hyper crossover? Look, honestly I don't know what else it would be, and it sounds incredibly boring if it's just because here's the deal, right? It's probably just some sort of stupid like Oh, it's a game-themed episode with cards and chess. Ooh. But that's boring. So if it's a big hyper crossover, or like at least the beginning of it, that'd be much more interesting. But and, and we are in the last six episodes, right? Um I think so. I think I think these are the this is the last episode time we'll be covering three episodes because next time we're covering four episodes and it's the last four so yes the la- we are the- in the last this seven is the episodes. sixth last episode the one we're talking about right now which is yes according to our ballpark estimates at the beginning finally when the story begins apparently so Though, remember remember those four episodes are put, are put together because they are all one big episode basically i can't wait to sit down and see all of this season in one movie length episode at the end yep basically like, as though nothing else ever happened yep wow. um oh by the way um does crunchyroll do they have like the next time ons no okay just just checking anyway so are they big uh, spoilers uh, at, the, at the end of the third episode obviously there are spoilers because the ne- the first episode next time is the start of the actual plot so <laughs> oh okay so not this one then in which case it's no, probably a big uh, game themed episode no as I said the last four episodes are the four episodes of plot and that's we're covering four unbelievable. episodes unbelievable like that's imagine what I said oh, I, we're, we're covering these together imagine if I see all the plot and I'm like oh it actually made total sense and it makes all the characters good and I can't believe this show isn't popular 
Well, no. It's never, ever going to happen. But imagine! No. Imagine! What will annoy you about this episode? Well, if it's just a big, stupid game-themed one that is the sixth last episode of the season and story hasn't happened yet. I think about this, right? Is this, what, episode 20? This is episode 20. Yeah. It's episode 20 of a season, and I still don't know what the protagonist wants. Yep. 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 We don't even know who the bad guy is, or if there's a bad we, guy. There is. There has currently not been a bad guy. We know something is happening because the Digiquartz didn't exist before, or the Digimon would yeah. have told us about it, and it turns them kind of evil. But there is no antagonist whatsoever. No, like absolutely not. Do you think it'll be a good episode? No, I don't think any episode will be a good episode. What rating? Um, uh, that's a good question. Like a one. I think it's gonna be a big waste of time. Yikes! I don't think I can really give it anything. What, uh, filler or fill, filler, filler or filler? Uh, filler or filler not or filler. filler? Well, that answers my question, doesn't it? Mm. It's filler. Filler, yes. And then the third episode that we're watching this time, which is our last non plot epi- episode, so this is episode 21, by the way. The oh my amusement God. park of dreams, Digimon Land. That land? What? Land. The, Digimon Land. Digimon Land. I can't, can't talk today. What will happen this Digimon episode? Digimon Land. The land. What I know the answer is yes, I know you yeah. do. What will happen this episode? Uh, they'll go to a theme park, but it will be all crazy because Digimon got into all the machines and they have to stop them. But the Digimon just want to have fun. And then there's a big bad guy Digimon who wants to have fun the most, but at the expense of the most people. Right. You know, what that will thing annoy they you? always do. Oh, it's just going to be so boring. Kill me now. Oh, that's sad. I know, right? You used to be hopeful for Digimon. Yeah, it's gone. It's dead like, forever. in three out of the seven or eight seasons. I know, but again, it's gone and it's dead forever. Hmm. Good episode? No, not what a rating? chance. Uh, uh, one again. Oh, just... filler or not filler? Uh, it will be filler for sure. Because yeah, we've established basically... that it will be. Yeah, like we established that it's not like the majority of this season is filler, not including the last four episodes. Literally which we'll like the entire thing. Yeah, so we, we get plot next time. So oh, finally? Get... Really? Yeah, when... That's so blessed. At the end of this episode that we are uh, we will that the listener is now listening to presume like presumably because they listen to this you'd hope so unless they're a patreon where they get like it in chunks y- you at the end of this episode in like two hours time or maybe less depending on how long we rant about how bad these episodes are you will know the last four episode titles excellent yes i hope it's exciting it is, i hope it is part one plot begins <laughs> yeah, it's just like um, Digimon World Tour again. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, death, any other predictions? Death, death. Uh, of what? Of these episodes. I just. Oh wait, I thought I did. I know, but I'm just saying any any like follow up to anything or. Oh no, not at all. Coolios. Well, I'm gonna go get a cake out of the oven, and then we can move on to the show. All right, absolutely. On to the show. The first episode that we watched this time is episode 73, and it starts off with a scuba diver, and she basically finds this sort of portal into to the digicourts which i guess is kind of a cool thing we know that previously we've seen taiki being able to go into the digital world randomly through like a portal we haven't really seen it since so it's kind of cool and she goes to a ship graveyard and something forces her out and then she sees clockman once she surfaced and was told about digimon so then we see that iru and crossheart are at the beach and Crossheart are fishing, and Iru wants to make you alone and wants to do things to him. And I guess she's in love with him now, which is random. I thought she said she wants him to be her hun- her henchman. Yeah, but I don't know why. It weirds me out more that she's hanging out with her family. That means that she has a family. Yeah, well, yeah, she's got to come from somewhere, right? She's a weird anime character. Like, I was going to say, Team Rocket didn't come from... No, they very specifically came from somewhere. Um, yeah. Like, who, who doesn't have a... Who just, like, famously has got, like, no background at all? I want to say, like, Brock. Brock from Pokemon. He's just a nobody. No, Brock, Brock's got a story. He's no, like I know. A family of breeders or something. Pokemon's way he? too long for the, for them to leave that out. But this is Digimon. It just doesn't matter. Zenjiro. Who's that? Like he was just created in the lab, probably. Wish he wasn't. Anyway, Tigru has something on his fishing rod, and he gets pulled into the water, and he doesn't let go because he's stupid, and then he dies at the end. Great. Anyway, so it turns out no Taiki actually decides he doesn't want Tigru to die, and he just says, "Hey, Tigru, just let go." So um, thanks Taiki for not killing. Tigru. Taiguru. And then Taiki sends out Shibekamimon because he's the best Digimon of all times. And I actually wrote Shibekamimon in all caps because he's the best. And I he helps. I, also, I did exactly the same thing. Because 
he's cute. I actually love that boy. Mm, he's a good boy. So Marimon actually was the fish. Surprised, don't know how it caught, caught onto the fishing rod, but whatever. And it turns out this is the girl from the start. Her name is Mizuki. And she needs help with this treasure hunt. And she's doing it to protect the ocean. And then we get a flashback to three minutes ago because we keep on doing this in Hunters apparently where they feel like they want to grab the, the scene we just had at the start of the episode and then add on the Digim- more Digimon stuff. And it's really weird and they keep on doing this. So we get a flashback except that when she sees the clock man he then gives her the cross loader. But it's just weird. It's the exact same scene. Like the exact same three minutes. And then they add on an extra 30 seconds. But they beef out the episode by adding in that extra couple of of minutes of the episode it's just really weird right i can't say i noticed it at the time it happens like the i think i pointed out last time it happened was in the pencil drawing episode and we get the in the scene where he meets the digimon but then we get an added on scene of the exact same scene and then an additional 30 seconds and it's really weird anyway so she doesn't super want to hunt digimon too much she's really she, more into treasure hunting and protecting the ocean i'm sure she's going to go back down there she went down underwater and she saw cthulhu yes but she loves the ocean and she wants to protect it so i can actually understand her motivation to like yeah i'm going to go back there but also with more people and these people have very obvious digimon because they just constantly have their digimon out all the time in public wouldn't she think like well there was a big creature down there and it obviously didn't want me there it would be protecting the ocean and the creatures in it to leave that thing alone right yeah so yeah she's but she not also saw, she saw cthulhu for starters so like <coughs> oh, so she's i don't know insane. got it yeah she's she's, in, she's intrigued Anyway, so Iru also joins in because she's a good guy now, apparently. Well, today she's a good guy. So they go diving and you apparently knows about different types of fish and Iru seems impressed. And then they go to the Digicourts and I love this whole thing because Shoutmon has been Digicross with Digikamimon the whole time so he has a little snorkel and it's so cute. I just love Chibe Kamimon so much. Why have we barely seen him? Because he's not even from this season, is he? He's from the first season of Cross Wars. Yeah, I guess he was. But like, <clears throat> yeah, because somehow Taiki is both not the main character, but also the key solver of all problems, which makes him the main character. Yeah, like, it's in Zero Two, at least we had them say, okay, Taichi's relevant for about three episodes, and then Daisuke does everything. Like, the ho- the, the new kids do the all the actual fights, and the older kids sort of take a step back. But this scene is just like, no. Nope, Taiki's in every episode except for the episode that was probably the best episode in all of Young Hunters. Which one was that again? Um, the one where he's just <coughs> at a baseball game and is and passes out at the end, the ghost hunting one. Oh my god, I forgot it. I already forgot that episode happened because it's only good by virtue of being totally neutral. Well, it's also good in the way that it's the way every episode of Young Hunters should be. With the sort of, and as I said, when we watched the episode, it should have a gag. And it's like, oh, what sport is Taiki playing today? And he's dead at the end. Like, it's just like, it's that would be a funny gag. It'd be like, you know, the Simpsons couch gag. Something that's the same theme, but different every time. And just like, oh, why couldn't Taiki help out today? Oh, he was at the kendo club or something. I don't know. It's just, I don't, but instead, I think they're too scared of letting go of him. I feel like in Zero Two, they kind of, as I said, the original kids, like Sora and Koshiro and Yamato and Taichi, they were always in the first three episodes sort of just there to help out sort of show the new kids the ropes but as soon as like the new kids were able to handle things on their own they sort of stepped back and that's fine that's why it should be but in this episode this season they're just so scared of losing taiki because tiger is just garbage anyway so mizuki finds a barrier and a voice tells her to leave and then the digimon finds out the barrier breaks with the human touch and this digimon who by the way is cthulhu from uh, the dark ocean so weird. He, like, yep. Does that mean they're in the dark ocean? Do you think? No, the, the dark ocean is a adventure universe. But it's like, but it's a different universe within that universe. Does so that mean it could be like between place? It's not. I know that. No, nah, like, it, nah, it it's, it's not. It could be cool. The dark ocean. Just yeah, imagine be really it cool. to be cooler than it is. Yeah, like I would love if because we saw like what appears to be the main characters from the previous seasons on a boat, like. I dig it if this was the exact same Dagomon who was in love with Hikari and there was a reference to him being the same one. That'd be almost pretty cool, right? And then we actually like we would actually get a continuation of that Dark Ocean storyline from Adventure. Yeah, but we're never going to like because it. they're hacks. They tried and try and I well, I thought they were trying and then they just sort of didn't. Like, oh there's a Dark Ocean. Oh my god, and then we never saw it again. Wow. Anyway, 
You were so, so happy uh, for such so, a short time. Yeah. Surprise, Dagamon. I, and Iru doesn't think he's cute, which is fair enough. And then they find a Plesiomon and Dagamon is after the Plesiomon. Mizuki orders I think Samarimon you mean to attack. Lapras. Yeah, it's it's a it's a plesiosaur. It's just a it's just a dinosaur. Like it's a, a Lapras. No, it's a plesiosaur. The only step is crab. It's just a plesiosaur. The only step is crab. The only step is plesiosaur. <laughs> it's the plesiosaur cycle. It has one stage. The only st- stage is plesiosaur. Plesio cycle. Wow, you Plesio just destroyed cycle. it. Whatever. So Plesiomon was actually protecting a, a digi egg, and also I want to point out that the kids are wearing wetsuits, but the entire time they look more like Power Rangers outfits because they're all like. How do they get custom a, wetsuits? How? Yeah, they're all color coordinated no, to no, the no, character. More than that. They're not like. No, you'd more, think they'd be boring black ones, right? They're no, rentals. No, look, more than that, they each have the character symbol on it. No. Tagiru's has. No, sorry, Taiki's has his little logo on it. No, but he, they all said none of them said they had the scuba diving training. Yeah, Why no, are they, they didn't. Custom? No, he has a they... custom diving suit. This makes me mad. Like, look back at the episode. He has this little yeah, like, no, I, thing I on his shirt. Yeah, no, I believe you. I believe you because they just I just couldn't get over the point. They just look like Power Rangers. They they're too cool looking to be wetsuits. I don't know. It just looks they look terrible. They're just Power Rangers outfits. Anyway, so Taiguru evolves Gumjamon, crosses him with Giga Breakjamon, and Taiki is just telling him off mid evolution. Which, by the way. Love it. Love the fact that we acknowledge that evolution is a thing that takes place. And I love whenever we get a cut to something else that is happening during the evolution because it's happened like five times in the whole of Digimon. And every time I've just said, yes, that's good. I don't know why. I just dig it. So Taiki's just calling Tiger an idiot mid-evolution. And that's another reason why I like it. So, yep, remember, Giga Breakdamon's a super uncontrollable Digimon that everyone said, Tiger, why do you want that? Also, doesn't he have so, more powerful yeah. Digimon available? Um, well, Giga Breakdamon's apparently the most powerful one but it needs he finds out that he that the Giga Breakdramon needs to be controlled by him which is stupid it's just stupid anyway so Plesiomon is able to communicate with Mizuki and tells her to protect the ocean Tiger is at the controls of Giga Breakdramon Mizuki gets Plesiomon did you cross the Submarimon with her Tiger gets Dagomon for some reason don't know why he wants this super evil Digimon but all right like that's the thing I don't get like, why would you want the evil Digimon? Well, like, they're not, not going to capture them. This season is scared of killing the character, like the Digimon. Well, because it's not in the design. You're hunting them. It's like they've they've cornered themselves with the concept. But these are mo- these are actual just dangerous monsters who want to kill you. Yeah, but they've cornered themselves with the concept. Yeah. So also, what happened to the egg? Yeah, I was like, I'm trying to remember. I just realized that. I just watched the show wrong and forgot how the what happened to the egg. No, I just and remember then, no, just then. And then, no, for sure, it just like that was never relevant. She just leaves the egg there. She's just like, well, I'm with Mizuki now. And then the egg is just left there to be eaten by, I don't know, the Sharkmon. I don't know. Also, anyway, have yep. you noticed that she's like teaching these kids how to dive, right? For the yes. first time. They've never d- 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 dove dived And they're professional? <laughs> At, like, and they, they deep sea dive no, and no, don't no, get no. the bends? I'm talking about how she's teaching them but she's in a submarine oh yep yeah, no that that's fine because at Is least if, if if something went wrong you could argue okay she can protect them they have Digimon that, with them. I mean, that too. If she's teaching that too. them what to do when she's when they're diving, why is she in a submarine? Is, is she like, do this, be in a submarine? In a purple submarine. A yellow submarine. It's not yellow, is There's it? bits of yellow on it. Mm, it's mostly grey. Yeah, it's mostly just an armadillo who is yellow. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> Good point. So, yep. Um, Iru apparently looked after you and gave first aid to him and now you're just thanking her and she's being a Sundera because this is kind of weird that they cha- I th- feel like they changed her character slightly in this episode but it's just slight enough that it's kind of annoying anyway Mizuki compliments Taiki and he goes red and Iru's being a Sundera because that's happening apparently and that's the episode and no, the introduction no, 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 no. Yep. you missed the most important part of the entire they've episode they've got the egg no. they've got the egg no, no, you, you, you totally mentioned that you oh yeah Iru Iru has parents. Why? Iru's dad. Why are you so amazed by this? Kids have parents, dude. Why does her dad look nothing like her at all? Because she's an anime. No, but look at look at um uh, Atmon. All their parents look right. And all like a lot of Digimon have the parents looking like the ki- the kids. But I'm just saying in anime at large, the parents look nothing like the kids. Like I'm pretty sure Ash's dad is a Mr. Mime. <laughs> And Ash's yeah. mum has red hair, and Ash has, like, black hair. And all of Misty's siblings have 
completely different hair, hair colours entirely. Anime just don't make sense with genetics. Well, that's probably true. And also, Iru just could be stealing someone else's parents. I don't know. She could be adopted. It's a protagonist thing. I don't know. She's a protagonist of her own story, which is apparently being annoying. Anyway, the introduction corner was Samarimon cross with Zeke Greymon. It's great. It has the, the little narwhal horn and it's really cute because I love the introduction corner and it gives me life. What do you think of this episode as someone who's new to Digimon? It's like, it feels like an episode that was meant to be twice as long as it was, cut down to a quarter of the size, and then that quarter was stretched out for no reason, you know? Like, you like you feel like this should have been like the, um, the Cross Wars movie, which is just like half an hour long, 40 minutes long? It, well, it actually, I was going to say it feels like a Digimon movie, because it's like, meet a new character, go to a weird new place, find a new problem that you would never have run into before, and it like has nothing to do with anything, and it's kind of weird and magic. And it's also a kind of like a big, bad-looking guy, it's not just a yeah. normal Monster of the Week. Like, I would not call Dagamon a Monster of the Week, even though every time he's appeared, he's been a Monster of the Week. He the idea is... that they find this like, friendly Digimon that's presenting this glowing egg, it's like this big, overarching story that could be important. Yeah. So you could see them building a movie around other a bad movie around this yeah yeah like it is it has a lot of aspects that all the other movies have like it's got a bit of um you know um the first tamers movie which was just the my hero academia movie they went to a place water was involved met a girl with a digimon helped her also no dagomon wasn't in that one was he no it was the guy who randomly had his face change into a digimon and it was horrifying that was awful and horrifying. Anyway, so what did you rate this episode? God, it was like a two at best. It was consistent, I, it a, I guess. I gave it a six because it was enjoyable. I liked that they actually have a female guest hunter. And I think Mizuki actually had personality. She was also probably older than all the other kids by maybe a couple of years. Like, maybe I think she might have been 16. Like, she was more she of a... She looked the same age, though. No, I, I feel like she was a little bit older. But, you know, it's hard to tell. But, like, I'm just... I don't know. I got got the feeling that she was either like not ma- not an adult but like an, a young adult like I feel like she's not not super young she's not a kid also I, I, I'm pretty sure I looked it up and it was like you have to be 14 to have like a scuba diver license to instruct other people or something in Japan or at the bottom the lowest level so I feel like I don't know I feel like 16 is how old she is anyway and no what about your what about your predictions in Noxus Synopsis? um I need to get it in front of me uh the answer to your question is that oh I thought that would be like a big hunt called by the old guy which is not entirely true it's always a big hunt caused by the old guy though but it wasn't I mean like he was involved to an extent he gave you a Digimon so obviously I guess he kind of wanted this to happen but it's probably not relevant mm. Any other feelings about this episode? Not really. Like, I, I, I feel really just neutral about so much of this show now. I just, I'm like, I'm always looking forward to it being over, you know? It's, I just wish it was. <laughs> the next episode starts off with kids playing not Yu-Gi-Oh! at an arcade. And this is one of those arcade machines where you have the cards and you put them on the this little pad and the, char- the characters come up on the screen and they fight so it's pretty accurate to those kind of games in Japan because I- I cu- I've watched a couple in my time and I didn't want to get into them because like I didn't want to come back with all these cards that weren't Garlay cards but like it just seemed really cool. Well, like visually they get the idea right of like how the machines work but I can't help but feel like the writer was somebody who had seen people playing them but had never played them themselves ever. Yeah well that's probably right because I feel like it was exactly what I saw but again, like, I also only watched and did not play. But you've played Magic, so you know how card games work. I thought like I- this was fine. Okay, okay, think about how this game system worked. The only thing that the game cares about is the number on your card, except in one instance, but we will ignore that for a moment because it's ultra rare. The only thing that matters is the number on the card, and that goes from 2,000 to 100,000 apparently, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, from there, the number on the card is only affected by how rare the card is, right? Mm. And also, the game appears to be played in exactly one round. You sit down, you put, you basically show them your best card, and they show you their best card, and then somebody wins. This is occasionally different, but that's yeah. basically the case, right? Because it's, it's basically just comparing cards and saying mine's better because it's it's rarer. Okay. I, I so, get your point. So in that case, there's no competition. No one is better at this game than anyone else. You yeah. either have the best cards or you don't, which is just not how card games work. You're aware of that. Yeah. And also, like, it goes... And, and it's immediately evident that that's true because the fact that this kid goes from the 2,500th best to the best in a week... 
by virtue of only getting good cards is insane because that means there's literally zero skill in this entire game furthermore like w- this is what 2011 2012 yeah, 2012, I think? Yeah, it's not the 90s. Card trading exists, and more importantly, online mm. markets for cards exist, which mm. is to say, card rarity doesn't mean anything. The idea that a card is rare only means that there's thousands and thousands of thousands of them. They're just not around you. But if you go online, you can just go find them. But in the context of what the show is trying to say, there's like two. They never say that. But if you can become the best because you collected like one really strong card or like one of each really strong card, that means there's only like one in the city. Right. What I'm saying is that the person who wrote this had no concept whatsoever on how like a game is designed. It had no concept whatsoever how like to make this interesting. And my favorite part about it is at the end when they're like making the distinction between the card game where you have just your good cards and how they will beat Rook Chessmon, which is yeah. to say like working together. It doesn't matter if you have the strongest Digimon, it's how they work together. They're literally describing a good card game. But I'm not certain they're self-aware about that. I mean, I guess there's nothing really to say about this episode besides, I guess, it whether or not it is, whether or not it's like a real thing or not. But I just... I feel like, yeah, I think you're right about the fact that it may just have been someone who's seen these games but not played them, because, yeah, you're you're right. When you think about actually playing games and comparing it to that, it's just sort of, ah, yeah. But to me, it's just like, oh, look at these. It's like an arcade machine. Because you think about, like, Magic is a good example. You can build fantastic decks without any of the rarest cards in the game. There are, like, first of all, you can do it without any... There are four rarities in that game. Common, uncommon, rare, and mythic rare. You can play that. Yeah. You can win millions of games with never, never touching a mythic I mean, rare. Th- you these can win are, tons of games without ever touching a rare. The arcade-based ones and those ones have more like they're a little more money-hungry in the fact that it's like Gaule. You put them. You, you 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 get a bad one and you get a good one, and the good one's got a really hard rate to capture it, but you'll still put money in anyway. So it's a sort of chance thing. It's a bit of an RNG. Like I mean, all card games are. So I feel like. It's more based on the arcade game machines, which are just like, how can we get kids to put in more money so they can get a chance to, with this rarer card? Because I put in so much money trying to catch this Latius, and I did not catch the Latius, I'd like to point out. For starters, to get the Latius course, I had to buy a magazine that had a, a, this ticket that I had to then take to the machine, scan the ticket, and then I would get a chance to fight to play this course that had Latius in. It's not like and a really pulled... embarrassing admission. Why are you going into this? <laughs> I tr- I and I tried to catch that thing like about an upsettingly number of times. It was probably more than ten, and like I did not catch the Ladius, and it was my last night in Japan, and I was just like, I want to catch this Ladius, and I didn't catch the Ladius. I didn't How catch the Ladius. How much money was that? Like an amount. Because I just like, think they recall throwing like ten dollars at one of those satellite machines. Well, you no, know, it's well, it's it's more fun than the satellite machine, and at least my Pokemon evolved from the battles which is great because like they evolve and you get a new card but like I'm just saying it's it's pretty fair with like you know uh, this one's really rare but it's harder to get and the arcade machine prints it out so you don't necessarily have to get it from like a card store or what have you. But this was 2011. Yeah and those games in Japan have been around forever. The Dragon Ball ones and the Yu-Gi-Oh one have been around for a long time in Japan. With that degree of complexity? Yeah they're just printing out cards. I don't know I guess it I thought it like required like a network and um, stuff. Yeah I mean the one before Gaole, which was some... Th- I forgot what it's called now. It's like Trello or something. Um, anyway, it's like Gaole, but they're on little discs. And this one, that that was like 2010. And it was the same thing as Gaole, but instead of chips, it was discs. And this is sort of like the version up from Gaole. I mean, the version before Gaole, rather. So, yeah, th- this was totally feasible to be around in 2012. And from watching these games, not playing them, it looks pretty similar. And we have not gotten to any of the plot, but I want to point out there's no actual plot because it's every single episode of Cross Wars. It's just the formula again. It's this kid is doing a thing and he's getting bullied and then he is sad so he's like I wish I was better at the thing because I'm getting bullied and then a Digimon shows up and goes I'm going to take you to Digicorts and I'm going to help you do this thing and the kid's like okay let's help me do the thing and then he starts doing the evil thing and then the Digimon is actually feeding on the evil thing which is his greed and then he's beating everyone and then Crossheart work out that something's going on and it's like oh this is just like a Digimon 
own thing. I really thought and... that the end, that the uh, plot of this one, like the moment it started, I'm like, oh, okay, it's cards. Okay, so maybe like because it's a card that puts a creature on a screen, that there'll be a card that is the Digimon, and no. it'll be like V, uh, V, uh, what's it called? V, v jump. V tamer. Oh, V tamer, right? Where like V jumps the manga. Where people are like, oh, you have a busted Digivice. That that thing's fake, right? But yeah, well, that would be good. With the Digimon, the Digimon like breaks the rules on the screen. It like has yeah, a lower well, number, but it goes and just punches the other thing in the face. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that'd be more like enjoyable as an episode. But no, this one's just the the, the just the formula again. So the kids just like, hey, this is probably Digimon, and then the Digimon evolves because of greed, because it's the same in every Young Hunters episode ever, and I'm just throwing my hands up into the sky saying this is just the this is the, the formula and then turns out this kid's been eaten now and he wants more so he goes to another kid who wants to be the strongest and starts feeding on this guy's greed and then Crosshearts just like let's fight and then they do a fight and then you says that they have to fight together which is just like this is 20 episodes in of this season and 74 of the whole season it all together why are they only coming up with Let's all attack at the same time now. This is a staple of Digimon. You should know this, that attacking all at once is a good idea. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, but they're not smart. But why are they... Like, you is like, says it's like it's some groundbreaking idea. Like, let's all use teamwork for the se- for first time or second time ever. And then you captures him, which I'm happy about because I hate Tagaru and I hate when Tagaru catches a Digimon and doesn't deserve it because Tagaru did nothing. Anyway, you catches it and then Hiroa, because that H- Hiro Ya or whatever his name is... Has wants to return the stolen cards. It doesn't matter what his name is because it's the same as every single guy of the week. He just kind of shows up, gets eaten by a Digimon, and then is sad at the end because everything's back to the way it was and he's going to be bullied again. Yay. So that's the end of the episode. Rook Chessmon introduction, cross with Revolmon. It's kind of cool, but this episode was so bad I can't even get a smile out of um, out of the Digimon introduction corner. What do you think of this episode as someone who's new to Digimon? God, it was not good. I mean, no, it was I, not. The, the problem is they come at it from someone from a position of somebody who's like competent at card games. Yeah. And so like, and yeah, it's a different system, but it can't be that different that yeah. there's literally no skill involved in your game at all. And also there's only like one copy of all the good cards. Yeah. So I mean, basically it was painful to watch. And also I feel like it's even worse because we're coming out of a couple of episodes which haven't been the formula. Like last episode was not formula. And then we had the episode before last, which was the UFO episode which while it appears formal on the surface the bad guy that we were fighting wasn't actually the Digimon monster of the week it was just a monster that was created and even the like the Digimon of the week wasn't actually a bad guy and then the episode before it was Betsumon again not formula one before it was the best episode of Young Hunters also not formula and then the episode before that was the um for Lesmon episode where a kid is completely misguided by this really creepy looking dude and that so that, that was the last um, episode that was formulaic and that was five episodes ago so it's kind of like they've been doing really well not being the exact same formula every time like even when it was sort of like the formula it was a little bit different with the Akakimon episode because that was you know that was good like he wasn't the bad guy he wasn't the one they were fighting it's I don't know I, I like that but why it just makes it sting even more when they go back to this formulaic boring rubbish that that I just I hate about this season and like it is easy just to watch and turn your brain off but when you actually have to think about it it's awful yeah it's not really it's not a good time particularly is it like Frontier was bad but there was not really the the formula that you could just predict in about five seconds which is kid is sad kid is being bullied kid is sad so Digimon shows up makes kid better but he's really just eating his emotions Crossheart find this out because that they just walk into the trouble apparently because they're main characters and then Crossheart goes, oh, we'll fight this Digimon. They fight the Digimon. Uh, Digimon is captured. Digimon apologises to the person. P- person will make things right. End of episode. Not always. Dagomon never apologised. I mean, he, you know, there's something that goes... The bad right. guys yeah, in the third episode never apologised. I mean, Rook Chessmon was kind of like a bad guy. Also was take, was captured by you. I can't believe he was destroyed by, like, child Digimon. I know he had hit himself first, but still. It's, like, embarrassing. What's up? Why are you frozen? I- and so what did you rate this episode? Uh, it was really terrible. It was like a zero. It had no entertainment value like at all. So I gave this episode a three. That, I, mean, like, I was going to say that's generous, but for you, that's terrible. I mean, it was... A three is bad for my rating, though. Yeah, that's what I said. It's terrible. I mean, yeah, I guess. For you. And 
How did it compare to a pretty consumer synopsis? Oh, I know I was off. I thought it was gonna be like really more generally game themed. I didn't I couldn't possibly have known it would be specifically about like card games. And furthermore, when I first saw Night Chess one, I'm like, is that the centaur like um Royal Knight from that other season? And then mm. obviously like no, it's in the name of the episode, it's Night Chess one. Episode 75 starts off with the cutest Digimon ever, which is surprisingly another one of the kid-designed Digimon. It's Bakumon, who's just... Baku means box. He's just Boxmon. And, yeah, it's just another one that some kid that was watching the show designed. And it is... It's just a really great design of a Digimon. And, yeah, he'd be like, I'm in a Bakumon. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty sure that exists on the internet, but I don't want to see it. So he's trying to get some high school girls to go to some fun place with him, which is super creepy and he's just appearing out of a TV or Persona 4 like and there is a female Bakumon who just takes people there by being super pushy and Bakumon's kind of bad at it because he just kind of like says hey can you come to a nice place with me it'll be fun and then this lady's just like taking them there forcibly so surprise surprise Taiki and you are investigating the fact that kids are disappe- disappearing and Taiguru just overhears some girls and just like hey this is a thing that's happening and then he he goes because he sees Bakumon and Bakumon Pokemon actually is happy to invite someone. So we get to see another fan created Digimon and it's Pillowmon who is just a giant pink pillow. It's adorable. And we find out that the boss of the world is Jokemon and Bakumon wo- uh, works there to get the children. And then apparently the girl one is the best and then the brown one who is the main Bakumon has none. But he brings Tigeru there, so I don't know why he says it's none, even though he's already brought someone there. So Bakumon's got this sort of really passionate outlook, and he wants everyone just to enjoy the whole the whole theme park. And then we see some kids from class are there, because apparently there's only like 30 kids in the entire area that this is in. I'm not sure if it's all of Japan, it's just like we've only seen 30 kids the whole time. Anyway, so Bakumon wants to increase his rank, and Tigeru says he'll help. And then this girl who just looks like Mako from Try. Uh, is with the other two girls but loses them because she doesn't want to go on the Ferris wheel ride and then it turns out Mercurimon's beast evolution might have eaten them. I think his name was Separatmon for memory, I don't remember Uh, but that was the thing so we get yeah we get a couple of fan made Digimon just uh, popping up in this episode which I really like but I think we've already had an amusement park episode this season and it was with uh, one of the the Death Generals that was like 10 episodes ago? I don't know, it was a while ago so we where are we at? Okay, so Bakumon is in trouble with the true owner for bringing in outside Digimon and Digimon Hunters and then we get a cross heart evolution Digimon and it's without the split screen evolution again because this episode has no content so they just want to keep on doing things. Separate Mon is creepy and Bakumon attacks Jokemon and says that this isn't the Digimon land that he loves and he gets he basically just covers up the windows with his box power and the Digimon are scared but they don't scream anymore so that makes Separate Mon lose his power and Tiger gets both of them and all the, t- the children are returned. What do you think of this episode as someone who's near to Digimon? Uh, it was just not very good at all. Bakumon was cute. Uh, yeah, but the Boxmon was really cute. But it's really weird seeing, like, the big construct from, God, what season was it? Savers? Frontier. Oh, Frontier, Frontier, yeah. Frontier. Frontier, and it's like this whole fusion thing. It's got this history, and it's like, oh, it's they're putting it forward as A, an amusement park ride, which obviously, if you're watching this, you never believed it from the beginning. But second of all, it's like eating children, but its plan is, like, it needs laughter to power up, but only from inside. It's, it's so confusing. It's just yeah. a huge waste of everyone's time. <laughs> oh my at least god. There was a, at least there was a character that like vaguely like Mako. And it's like, there was no story to this episode, right? Because it's mm. not like, there was never a mystery. There was never a time when the good guys were like, in danger. This is the weirdest thing, right? Because I think what, what Adventure would do, right? Like, think of the Toyland episode. It, yeah. would, it would present you with this fun idea, and then the dark side would happen, and it would hit like, one or most of the group such that somebody became the main character for that episode and got to got to shine right that was the formula yeah. back then what they've done is they've taken that danger element but in only doing it to people who aren't involved with Digimon it means that everyone is still the main character everyone gets the same amount of agency no one stands out and you just go from this thing where like well there wasn't a problem and now a problem was introduced and then literally 20 minutes later it has fully triggered and been resolved and there's mm. zero zero tension at all. None, none yeah. I say. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fair. But at least it's not the same formula. 
And just go, just to go to my rating, I gave it a four out of ten because like it was better than the last episode on the basis that it wasn't the formula. Well, there were two. There were two, right? There's kid being bullied who has a Digimon help them pass that bullying, and then they become evil. And there is Digimon, Digimon provides experience for for kid or like for somebody. And that Digimon is not inherently evil necessarily, but like something there is a bad result. You know, like, yeah, like the Trainmon episode, episode is almost identical with this one. Yeah. I mean, the Trainmon episode had a, um, a, ch- a chosen child in it. Like, the another crossloader guy. A hunter. That's what they're called. Like, at least it had that sort of difference in something to it. And this episode had a difference in something. It was a character. Like, it, like the Digimon was a character. And it was just a little bit more than just the, the formula that we've had in previous episodes. And I really appreciate that. And that's why I gave it a, a 4. Which is still not a glowing review, mind you. It certainly it does not, not even deserve a 4. It deserves It's not a, a functional two. episode. And that 2 it was is boring. all the Boxmon. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, good point. The Boxmon are great. I love their design. And well done, kid, for designing <laughs> one of the cutest Digimon nah, I've seen look, since Digicarmon. Digi- well done Chibicamon. on the crew for salvaging that design. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, so your rating was two. My rating was four. I think you're. I think you're right. Maybe, maybe I'll downgrade my last ranking to a two and this one to a three because this episode's still better than the last episode. And what about your predictions in Obnoxious Synopsis? So I said that like the Digimon would be running wild in a real life amusement park. I had no idea they'd be running their own amusement park. That's crazy. For Postmon Pat this time, I will read our Gmail and I'll also read our With the Will because I may as well. So first up, we on With the Will, we have one from Chakmon. And Chakmon says how he never noticed that the Goggle Kids were in the title card as well as Shadows on the Boats. And the episodes, and this is talking about not last week's episodes, but the episodes before, were pretty forgettable. And the length of the episodes were, like, the length of Kichi and Lokomon meeting, that was that was enjoyable. But it's out of character for Ren just to give Kichi the Digimon, as Ren is usually more cutthroat. And I believe you said that when we what, we covered the episodes, Jay. He's like the evilest bad guy ever. He's like, nah, you can just have it. They're all fairly evil. No. Nah. And then we have... So the head dude is Chuck fine. Mon's, we have Chuckmon saying that Volkajamon was pretty cool, but didn't do anything cool and yep that that's that is very correct episode 69 was a waste but no but one could empathize with makoto's loneliness but how could anyone trust for lesmon yep that's that's how i w- would react to that episode like yeah the loneliness is fair enough but who could trust the most evil looking guy ever then chakon says that we are too hard on tagaru he has a good heart but s- and it's believable that he'll befriend anyone yeah but i don't know i just feel but like it would make him. more sense for taiki yeah i, I hate him and um, Chuckmon says they didn't post their thoughts on episodes 64, 65, and 66, but yay to Nene in Hong Kong, but the premise was weak. And yes, it was. Flower Wiz- Wizardmon was cool, and low energy Tigeru was interesting, and even better, the Tigeru Fla- Flower Wizardmon. Yep, that was the good part of the episode. The only and good part. And then, then Chuckmon says that Chuckmon's surprised that Jay gave a 4 to episode 70, and only expected Which one's episode 2 below. Episode 70 the was. Ghost? Ghost, I think. Like, it's yeah, just it was a ghost. competent. Here's the deal, right? I'm giving these low scrolls because they're not even competently put together. Like, when it's yeah. competent, fine, you'll get higher scores out of me. I'm not a monster most yeah. of the time. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I liked episode 70. It's probably the best episode of Young Hunters. How sad then, is that? Yeah. Uh, then we have episode 71, where Chakmon says it was done with Betsumon, which is mean because I really liked that episode. Not as much as episode 70, but, you know, Betsumon's fine. And Chakmon says that episode 72 is his favourite because of Akakimon, and the kid that designed it must have been really excited. And Chakmon really likes Shota because he's relatable. And, yeah, I, I like Akakimon. How thrilled must that kid be, right? Which which kid are we talking about? The kid who designed Akakimon, which is oh, the yeah, um, sure. pencil. Mm. And then on Gmail, we've got an email from Libramon. And they say they don't actively hate Cross Wars Part 3, but it's not very good. And, yeah, I would say I'm in the same boat. I don't actively hate it, but it's not very good. I, I can't Lip- hate it because that would require emotions that it's not drawing out of me. You nothing it. I, I just, I'm so neutral to it. Yeah. It's just boring. Libramon says that they have a soft spot for some things, including Mizuki in episode 79. And, uh, no, I think they actually mean, unless I wrote it down incorrectly, which is fine. May- maybe I meant to write 19 because it is episode 19 when Mizuki shows up. And she says that she's the only female guest hunter and her design's really great. And disposition is great and she's cool and charming. And I would agree. I really love, 
I really love Mizuki, and I really I enjoyed the episode. It was fine. It was. Didn't we establish in today's ep- the first thing we watched today that that was not the only female guest hunter? No, we did. I but said that. I, I said today. That was Mizuki is the only female guest hunter. Oh, because the ghost girl doesn't actually have one, right? I, I, no. my head, she was. Yeah, well, she should have been because she was designed like a character. She looked. She was the best designed one of all of them. Yeah, basically, I really love her design. She looks like she could be in another show as her own show as a protagonist. I'd, I'd love that. Alright everybody, join us for the next episode of The Quintessential Quintuplets The Golden Insect The Mysterious Metallifiquagman And now reveal the secret of the Digimon Hunt Finally Fine. It's like the third last episode And Grand ga- Gathering of the Legendary Heroes The Playoffs of the Digimon o- Seriously? Seriously, All-Stars the second shoes. last episode is a filler episode <laughs> The Digimon Perhaps. All-Stars And now burn up Tuggeru Because he's the main character apparently I Hope the glorious Digimon hunt. I hope that they, they're 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 only doing the hunt in the last episode. Yep. Notice how all these episodes have basically the word hunt in it or some sort of theme that it's the game. Remember the theme of the uh, season, right? Mm. Also, um, I keep on reading Metal Life Kuagamon as Meta Life Kuagamon, which sounds like some single parent Kuagamon who has like a pyramid scheme job. Metal Life. Like a- yeah, advertising these special Meta Life pills that oh, will make you yeah, lose weight. It. Yeah. 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 From uh, Orange so is the, the Black. Yeah, yeah. That, the, the, you know those things are real, right? Orange is in the Black... In, is, is, Orange is the New Black didn't just come up with that thing. That oh, is no, a real no, pyramid those scheme thing, right? kind of things exist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, ex- exactly. Like, Orange is the New Black is sort of what I had in mind anyway, of that sort of, like, the single parent that needs to make money, so, like, sells these magic things that make them thin, but is probably just protein powder and turmeric and sadness. <laughs> That's what they're all made I don't of. Know. Anyway, so the link dumps link in the description, and, of course, as I said, the survey will also be linked in the description. Please do it, and we'll read out the results in our All of Cross Wars episode, which is in a month's time, I think. Our red bubble's linked in the description as well, and you can get more than just shirts there too. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintranslationmod.gmail.com or you can comment on this episode or message us on SoundCloud. You can follow us on at Translation on Twitter and you can find us on Lost in Translation Mod on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. We have a discussion thread on With the Will and a Reddit thread in the Digimon subreddit and we would appreciate if you review us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher and any other podcast listening app that you use. Ratings really assist people finding out about the podcast, so we'd appreciate it. We also have a website, vote, vote and polls, check out our release schedule, and check out our blog posts, especially ones about surveys. Yay! You love surveys. I love surveys. And uh, you can donate to our Patreon, which is linked in the description for as little as a dollar a month, which gets you access to our listener Slack chat group, but there are high levels with more rewards, such as notes, early episodes, and more. And Man, I should change that. Now it just gives it gives us ac- them access to our listener Discord group. I should probably change that in... Even though we, we made that change like a couple of episodes ago, I forgot to actually change in the segment guide whoops that anyway continue that seems important yeah um, and thank you to our Patreon supporters Joe Anime Guy who is Anime Guy Kurosaki on the number one on YouTube Chakmon Stephen Reeves who is Wild Wings 64 on IO3 uh, Kaidawashi Chisai who you can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr Kyle Delady Bugman whose anime blog you can read it at deladybug.productions Tom Glitchgo Matthew Anthony who is at Anto Classic on Twitter Lismet who is a like one on Tumblr Quinn Sithobi Megan The Time Optimist Nicholas Starry key of the friends and firelight podcast and alex you can also make a one donation on our paypal which you found in the description it's paypal.me slash ergemon and make sure it's not to the podcast we'll see you guys next time bye, bye. Shining